The Critical Path Initiative is FDA's effort to stimulate and facilitate a national effort to modernize the scientific process through which a potential human drug, biological product, or medical device is transformed from a discovery or proof of concept into a medical product. Biomarkers can be applied in several ways from an FDA perspective. It could be interest, you know, important in uh, diagnosis, clinical practice, and of course, drug development. Even in basic research, it's very important to employ biomarkers to understand disease heterogeneity and molecular pathways underpinning disease. In recent times, we have seen a lot of evidence in the field of oncology where biomarkers have identified some specific subsets of disease, making them molecular diagnostic biomarkers. I would like to start with explaining what we think drug, drug development tools are in this context. We believe they are methods, materials, or measures that aid drug development. And we use the short form DDT. Initially, I was a little confused because of the pesticide that's also has the same you know, <laughs> acronym, but DDT qualification. So it's drug development tools when you're thinking FDA um, and the qualification process. We believe there will be many tools. Currently, we have three tools. One is the clinical outcome assessments qualification. Another is animal models under animal rule qualification. And the third one is biomarker qualification. There is a guidance available, and this was uh, published in 2010. And um, it's being finalized currently, so it should be available. The finalized version should be available sometime very soon. We also have a web page where we have given a lot of information about these drug development tools. And again, as Frank said, the easiest way is to Google FDA and DDT, and you'll get both these um, rather than navigate through the FDA website. You could do that, but this is easier. Um, I'd like to define biomarker qualification. And before going there, one of the questions which is often asked is, why qualification, why not validation? We would like to you know, differentiate between the two processes. When you talk about biomarker validation, it's usually the test validation. You're thinking of analytical validation. You're thinking of uh, clinical validation. And, when we, and uh, once you validate the biomarker, it's good to use. Here, biomarker qualification is somewhat different because there is a context of use that's important. So biomarker qualification is um, a conclusion that within the stated context of use, that's the specific context of use. The results of assessment with a biomarker can be relied upon to have a specific interpretation and application in drug development and regulatory review. So the two differences are context of use and of drug patient. development. In the trial also itself need to think basically... that additional studies are needed in order to qualify the biomarker. And at this stage, if you're going to plan the studies, you should consult the FDA and get the feedback. Even if the data are existing data, you need a prospective statistical analysis plan for qualification purposes. Again, that's another reason to want to consult uh, FDA at this stage. You need to also think of two different data sets, at least two test set and a confirmatory data set. Sometimes you have just one big data set. You can divide it into two portions prospectively and say you're going to use this portion of the data as a test set and the other portion as a confirmatory data set. I wanted to describe the process a little bit. Um, we have three main stages, initiation stage, consultation and advice stage, and the review stage. Even before you get to the initiation stage, you you or any potential submitter can contact me or the uh, regulatory project manager and ask us about the process. Talk to us informally about your biomarker and see if this is something that's fit for biomarker qualification from our perspective. And uh, there could be a dialogue that can lead to the initiation stage where a letter of intent is sent to us and we review it and then we make a go, no go division in the biomarker qualification program. Then if it's a yes, then we get a team together, a biomarker qualification review team. These, this team will have expertise from different groups. 
we'll definitely have a statistician, we'll have a clinical reviewer, we'll have uh, somebody from CDRH to give us you know, feedback on the assay, if the assay is validated, is, is it going to be good enough, is it robust enough, and others as needed. And then um, the LOI or the letter of intent is reviewed and there's an internal meeting where we discuss the LOI and we come up with advice and comments to the submitter which we call specifications for the briefing document. And this is then sent to the submitter and submitter looks at it and uh, this is when the consultation advice stage starts when the briefing package is sent to us. The briefing package basically has more information about the biomarker and what's the existing knowledge, why you think that this biomarker is good to qualify, what's the rationale and how you plan to go about it, etc. And we again send you feedback and then we send the submitters feedback and then we have a face-to-face -face meeting where we discuss whatever issues there are. Generally, the submitter gets to pick the questions to ask FDA. This is an iterative process that goes on, not um, you know unlimited number of times. It's usually two, two times or sometimes three, where we ask for maybe a statistical analysis plan. We may ask for some clarification and so on. And once both sides are happy with the development of the biomarker, we have the review stage that comes in. So far, we have three sets of uh, biomarker sets qualified and two of them, all three are for preclinical or non-clinical safety biomarker use, and two of them are nephrotoxicity biomarkers, and one is a cardiac uh, damage or cardiac cardiotoxicity, if you will, um, biomarkers. There are other paths um, in, available at Cedar FDA that one can use for integration of biomarkers and drug development. One is the regular uh, IND, NDA, BLA review process through which one can bring in the biomarkers with an exploratory data and then once they show promise, they can go further and can be used in either clinical trial design or in any other way that uh, is feasible. But this biomarker will become accepted only in the context of that particular drug, so that's the limitation. We also have another process called the VXDS or the Voluntary Exploratory Data Submission. FDA has a lot of acronyms, sorry about that, but um, that's, fact. that's a fact. Um, so this process is without any regulatory strings attached. If anybody has exploratory data they think are interesting and they want to share it with uh, FDA and to have a scientific exchange of ideas, and uh, to get FDA's current thinking or feedback, it's a good process to come to. Again, this, is, this does not have any regulatory strings attached. Finally, to the take home points, um, some people are worried that it may become a requirement. It's not a requirement. Biomarker qualification is a voluntary process. Uh, the case by case, that's the IND, NDA, BLA pathway, remains a very valuable pathway for integration of biomarkers and currently well established widely used biomarkers do not require formal qualification and again as i mentioned earlier it's uh, this process is intended or the program is intended for biomarkers to be used in multiple drug development programs and consortia or collaborative groups are likely to be the um, sources uh, for qualifying these biomarkers and uh, there are no definitive time clocks associated with it, though it's considered a PDUFA activity.